chapter, Clinical Decision Making in Pharmacy Practice. Upon completion of this module, you will be able to define clinical decision making in pharmacy practice, describe the factors that impact clinical decision making, identify three responsibilities involved in direct patient care, identify the key steps in the patient care process, and differentiate between patient-centered care versus product-centered care. We are all involved in making decisions in life, from what we're going to eat for breakfast, where we're going to live, and our next career move. Some decisions are simple and can be made quickly and more intuitively, while other decisions are more complicated and take more time as we weigh out the options, anticipate the outcomes, and decide on the best course of action in the given moment. Clinical decision-making follows a similar path to those decisions that we make in our daily lives. Although pharmacists are involved in making clinical decisions on a daily basis, there's currently no universally accepted definition for clinical decision-making in pharmacy practice. There are numerous synonyms that are used when we refer to clinical decision-making in pharmacy. Clinical judgment, clinical reasoning, professional judgment, professional opinion, or even problem-solving. In the absence of a universally accepted definition for clinical decision-making in pharmacy practice, I would like you to now take a few minutes and reflect on what clinical decision-making in pharmacy practice means to you. Think about how you embody clinical decisions in your practice on a daily basis and try to formulate a definition that you think could work for pharmacy. This diagram illustrates the elements and factors involved in clinical decision-making. Scientific evidence, which includes clinical practice guidelines, experience and judgment, clinical circumstance, including other things such as patient comorbidities, as well as patient preference. All of these are taken into account when formulating your clinical decision. There have been concerns that patient-centered care with its focus on individual needs might be at odds with an evidence-based approach, which tends to focus on large populations. Fortunately, that debate has been laid to rest. Proponents of evidence-based medicine now accept that a good outcome must be defined in terms of what is meaningful and valuable to the individual patient. Patient-centered care and evidence-based medicine consider both the art of generalizations and the science of particulars. Your clinical decision may vary from that of other pharmacists and physicians. That does not mean it's wrong. There are often several appropriate recommendations for the resolution of drug therapy problems. If your decision has taken into account your experience and judgment, plus scientific evidence, including clinical practice guidelines, plus clinical circumstances, including the patient's comorbidities, as well as patient preferences, then be confident in your recommendation. Through patient follow-up, you will have the opportunity to reassess the appropriateness of this decision. It may be effective. You may have to try something else. This is part of patient-centered care, that you too are learning all the time through the patient follow-up process. You learn what's working and what isn't. It is a dynamic process. As you assess, gather information, and listen to the patient, several different ideas and solutions may come to mind. While all of them may work and be appropriate, you will need to determine is the best clinical decision in your opinion and with your patient's agreement for that individual patient at that time. This is patient-focused care. There are three main responsibilities involved in providing patient care. The first is the assessment, determining each individual patient's needs in a comprehensive manner to identify what needs to be done to return the patient to a state of health. The second is the care plan, organizing available resources which meet the needs of the individual patient. And the final step is evaluation, following up with the patient in order to be held accountable for the decisions made and the results achieved. I find acronyms very helpful, and I refer to this process as the ACE process. The ACE has the highest value in a deck of cards, and it's also used as a verb, implying a level of excellence. So I often ask myself, did I ace this patient care opportunity? This helps me remember the process and commitment to the highest standard of care of which I owe a duty to my patients. This drug chart neatly breaks down drug therapy problems. The left-hand side of the chart defines the drug-related needs in terms of evaluating the indication, the effectiveness, the safety, and the adherence of the medication. 
the right-hand side categorizes the problems into further specifics. These seven drug-related problems form the basis of the pharmaceutical care model of medication management in patient care. Ontario's Pharmaceutical Opinion Program provides a framework and reimbursement model for pharmacists to collaborate with prescribers to make recommendations to resolve identified drug therapy problems. At this time, the reimbursement framework is limited to those patients on ODB or Trillium. This chart further describes each of the seven drug therapy problems for greater specificity and clarity. Let's take a look at a case. So, we have a 68-year-old female patient bringing in a new prescription for all of her regular medications, one of which is Residronate, 35 milligrams weekly. Okay, it'll take us about 20 minutes to get these prescriptions ready for you, Mrs. Lane. Or if you can't wait, we can have them delivered to you later this afternoon. I'd prefer to wait, no rush. I'll just have a look around. Okay, I'll let you know when they're ready. While preparing the prescriptions, the pharmacy technician notes that 12 tablets have lasted the patient 18 weeks. Iris, the pharmacist, decides to discuss this with the patient, Mrs. Lane. Iris, I'm just processing Mrs. Lane's prescriptions and it looks like she hasn't been taking her Resedronate 35 milligram tablets as prescribed. Take a look at these refill dates. Yeah, 12 week supply has lasted her more than 18 weeks. Yeah, I see that. You're right. That's a good catch, Michael. I see that, Mrs. Lane. Yeah, she's still in the store. Can you ask her to meet me in the consultation room? I'm going to sit down and talk to her and find out why she's not taking her medication. Sure. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for meeting with me in my consultation office. So nice to see you. So tell me. How have you been keeping? I seem to be managing okay. I just went to the doctor this morning and, well, no major problems, thank goodness. That's wonderful news. I'm glad that you're feeling well. I had a quick question for you. Your medication, the Residronate, this is the one that you take for your osteoporosis, have you been taking it once a week the way that the doctor prescribed? Well, I try, but the truth is I just can't seem to remember. I'm so good with my other medications, but this one's tricky. Monday morning is when I'm supposed to take it, but I often forget. And by the time I realize I've forgotten, it's Thursday or Friday, and I'm afraid to take it too close to the next Monday, and... <sighs> I know I should have mentioned it to the doctor today, but we spent so much time talking about diabetes and foot care that I honestly just forgot. I know it's important for me to take these. I don't want to end up like my neighbor who had a broken hip. But living alone, I don't have anyone to remind me. So, let's use the patient care process to work up our case for Mrs. Lane starting with the assessment. What information have you gathered about Mrs. Lane? And what else do you want to know? What is the main drug therapy problem you have identified? Take a few minutes to answer these questions. Now, based on your assessment and identification of drug therapy problems, what would you like to do to resolve the problem? What are your goals of therapy for Mrs. Lane? What do you want to do to resolve the drug therapy problem you identified? Are there any drug therapy problems that you want to prevent? Take a few minutes now to answer these questions. So let's move on to the final care process, the evaluation. What do you want to monitor moving forward? When will you follow up? How frequently will you assess for new problems? Take a few minutes to think about these questions. Let's look at how the pharmacist handled this situation. 
Yeah, I, I understand that it can be difficult to remember to take this once a week. Um, did you know that it's also available as a once a month tablet? I wanted to let you know that just in case that might work better for you. What do you think? Hmm, once a month. I do call my older sister overseas in the morning on the first of every month. We've done that for years. I could take the tablet before the telephone call. Plus, I could let my sister know about this and she could remind me at the beginning of the call. Yes, you know, the more I think about this, the better I like it. Once a month will be easier for me to remember than every week. Well, you know what, that sounds great. So why don't we try this? I'm going to change this once a week tablet to a once a month tablet, and I will let your doctor know that we're making this change. Then what I'd like to do is to call you on the first of every month in the afternoon, just to see you know, if this is easier for you to remember. And we'll do that for a couple of months and make sure that we're on the right track. Would that be okay with you? Sure, and if I'm not home, you could just leave a message. Okay, perfect. And I'm just entering our schedule of calls, and I, and I see here that our very first call on the first of next month actually falls on a Sunday, and as you know, we're closed. So I'll call you on the Monday, if that's okay with you. Okay. And before you go, I wanted to show you this pamphlet on falls prevention, which is important for everyone, but particularly for someone like yourself who's living with osteoporosis. I'll give you a few minutes to review it while we finish up with your medications, and then I'll go over it with you, and I'm going to highlight a couple of key points for you and to answer any questions that you may have, okay? Okay. Perfect. And I'm looking forward to your call, Iris so I can brag about how well this new once a month plan is working. I'm looking forward to it as well. So thank you so much for coming in. Did the pharmacist ace this patient care opportunity? Yes, she did. The pharmacist completed the assessment. She assessed that the patient was non-adherent to resydronate. She completed a care plan. She discussed the goals and the patient agreed and accepted her suggestions of monthly resydronate. Then, the pharmacist informed the prescriber of the change. She completed an evaluation. The pharmacist will go on to call the patient on the first of the next three months to monitor and evaluate the success and look for adverse drug reactions. The pharmacist did indeed ace this patient care opportunity. Let's look at this situation in another way. In my own practice, I view every encounter through a SOAP process. S is for subjective. What is the patient telling you? What are they complaining of? O is for objective. What objective data do we have? Do we have a blood pressure, a hemoglobin A1C, a fasting blood sugar, or refill dates which may suggest non-adherence? A is for assessment. What is your assessment of the drug therapy problem? And P is for plan. What are you going to do? What are the goals of therapy? What do you want to do to resolve the drug therapy problem? What do you want to monitor? And when do you want to follow up? So let's apply the SOAP process to this case. S. Mrs. Lane can't remember to take her weekly Resydronate 35 milligram tablets. O. Overdue refills. 12 tablets have lasted 18 weeks. A. Non-adherence to weekly bisphosphonate therapy. P. Goal to prevent fragility fracture. Adapt Resydronate 35 milligrams weekly to Resydronate 150 milligrams monthly dosing. Notify Dr. Smith by fax. Follow up with patient by telephone on the first of the month for the next three months to monitor for improved adherence and to assess for adverse drug reactions. Reviewed and provided preventing falls leaflet from osteoporosis.ca. Another way of looking at this is that you are documenting a brief record of care or in other words, simply capturing a systematic format of what occurred in that specific patient interaction. So let's pause and reflect on some questions. Was this clinical decision a difficult one to make? No, by listening to the patient and checking refill dates, 
the pharmacist was able to quickly determine the problem and a potential solution. Often, an intervention does not have to be complex to have a huge positive clinical impact on patient care. Did this take a lot of time for the pharmacist to research? No, the pharmacist was aware of different dosing regimens, which may be helpful to this patient. Was this clinical decision important to try to improve patient outcomes? Yes, absolutely. Improving adherence to residronate increases the prevention of a fragility fracture, which can be debilitating to the patient. She lives alone and a fracture could be a negative, life-changing event, robbing her of autonomy and independence, not to mention being very costly to the healthcare system. Was this interaction about the product or the patient? This interaction was about the patient and the patient's relationship with the medication in her daily life. It was simply not working. It did not meet the patient's needs. Again, the pharmacist simply did not refill the current weekly prescription and say, just keep trying, you'll eventually get the hang of it. Remember, it is a really important medication for bone health. Can you do this in your daily practice? Many of you are doing this in some manner, and we applaud those leaders. As we all like to challenge ourselves in our professional lives, the challenge is to implement this focus seamlessly and routinely. At a continuing education event later that evening, the pharmacist discusses this case with some colleagues over dinner. I think you jumped ahead too quickly, her colleague advises. I would have suggested weekly blister packing first before changing the dose and the dosing regimen, another colleague pipes in. I usually provide a pharmacy calendar and circle the dosing day in red. If the patient keeps it on their fridge, they may remember to take it better. What is your professional opinion? What would you have done? Other pharmacists may have chosen a different path. However, it is your role and duty to determine the best clinical decision, in your opinion, for that individual patient at that time. This is patient-centered care. There are several other reasonable options as solutions for this patient-specific drug therapy problem. The pharmacist could have discussed and recommended another day of the week. Perhaps Monday is not the best day. Or the pharmacist could have discussed this and recommended residronate five milligrams every morning as she may be more likely to remember a daily morning routine. Or the pharmacist could have discussed the benefits of a blister packaging service with her other medications. If the patient was deemed high risk, the pharmacist could have recommended that she discuss denusumab 60 mg subcutaneous every six months with her physician. Third-party coverage options would also have to be discussed and explored. Again, this pharmacist determined that a trial of monthly residronate with monthly pharmacist follow-up would be the most appropriate solution at this time for this patient but changing to monthly residronate was the clinical decision made by this pharmacist given the discussion with the individual patient. A different patient may have said that monthly dosing would have been even harder to remember. However, every patient is unique. Patient-centered care does not apply a cookie cutter approach to solving identified drug therapy problems. Hence, the patient assessment process becomes a critical step in the thought process of determining the most appropriate treatment plan for the resolution of the drug therapy problem. However, it may be through your experience as a pharmacist that you see that many forgetful patients do benefit from a monthly dosing regimen. Through experience, you will then have the confidence to recommend it moving forward, while at the same time recognizing that it is not an appropriate solution for everyone. Patient-centered care, which is now sometimes also referred to as person-centered care, does not have a universally accepted definition. However, it can be broken down into the following six principles. Let's determine whether they were met in our case study with Mrs. Lane. Respect. Yes, the pharmacist took the time to speak with the patient and was respectful of the patient's concern. 
Next, listening to and understanding. Yes, she was concerned about living alone and forgetting to take her residronate. Her goal was to be adherent to her therapy. Informing. Yes, the pharmacist advised her of a suitable alternative dosing regimen, which may be helpful in her situation. Next is empowering patients to actively participate in decision-making regarding their health. Yes, the pharmacist engaged the patient by asking her if she thought this might work in her particular situation. Assisting patients in setting achievable goals with enabling strategies to improve their health outcomes. Yes, the pharmacist was engaged in problem solving and offered new solutions, and she did not just walk away from the problem. Providing continuity of care to regular review patients' progress in meeting their health goals. Also, yes, the pharmacist plans to call monthly to assess if this recommendation was effective and whether the goal of improved residronate adherence was being met. This case study was clearly about an individual patient and their specific drug therapy problem. The patient could not remember to take her weekly prescription of residronate. In the past, Pharmacists have focused on providing drug distribution and timely drug information and counseling to patients. Now, the focus must be on the individual patient for whom the drug therapy is prescribed. We must listen, ask, assess, and recommend and implement clinical decisions in the best interest of the patient to achieve therapeutic goals. As pharmacists, we should practice to our full scope to meet the patient's needs. It means listening to, understanding, and advocating for all of our patients. It means taking responsibility to make a clinical decision in the best interest of the patient. Before we conclude, let's look at a couple of questions to review what we have learned today. Which of the following factors are involved in your clinical decision making? A. Experience and judgment and scientific evidence. B patient preferences and clinical circumstances, C, scientific evidence only, D, A, and B. And the answer is D. Your clinical decision takes all of the listed factors in A and B into account. Let's look at another question. Clinical decision-making in daily pharmacy practice, as illustrated by this case study about medication non-adherence, is A, unrealistic, B, not why I became a pharmacist, C, achievable, D, too scary. And the answer is C. We as a profession can do this so that we're able to practice to our full scope of practice. Your professional judgment is an important aspect of clinical decision-making. Use it to establish and communicate the recommended drug therapy intervention that's in the best interest of the individual patient. Using the patient care process ACE or the SOAP process provides pharmacists with a decision-making process that is explicit, comprehensive, systematic, and effective each time it's applied. Practicing pharmaceutical care in this manner will build confidence and establish routine and processes. Everything we do is skills-based. The more you do it, the better it will become. So let's end with the three Ps. Practice, patience, and your patience too will all help this become a routine part of what we do every day.